Saint Augustine once said that God is he who gives God. According to Christian theology, our existence is a pure gift from God, and our telos, or purpose, is to embrace our giftedness and give thanksgiving back to God. Our relationship with God is meant to be a union of gift giving, where God is the initial partner, but we are also actively present in the union. Father Nikolaos Ludovicos calls this a relation of dialogical reciprocity. For Jacques Derrida, on the other hand, gift giving is impossible, and to truly give and receive a gift isn't something we're capable of achieving. According to Derrida, gift giving is impossible because it's through the recognition of the gift for what it is that the giver and receiver inevitably fall into the logic of economy or trade. He doesn't say that a true gift is impossible, but that if it is, it must remain beneath consciousness. Or in other words, the gift giving process cannot become for itself. It can never truly appear. Quote, as soon as a gift is identified as a gift with the meaning of a gift, then it is cancelled as a gift. It is reintroduced into the circle of an exchange and destroyed as a gift. As soon as the donee knows it is a gift, he already thanks the donator and cancels the gift. As soon as the donator is conscious of giving, he himself thanks himself and again cancels the gift by reinscribing it into a circle, an economic circle. Unquote. Derrida essentially identifies the cause of the impossibility of gift giving with sin. While he obviously doesn't use Christian terminology here, I'm not even sure if he would disagree with my characterization, as he himself says that what negates the gift and introduces the logic of exchange is pride. Quote, the one who gives it must not see or know it either, otherwise he begins at the threshold as soon as he intends to give, to pay himself with a symbolic recognition, to praise himself, to approve of himself, to gratify himself, to congratulate himself, to give back to himself symbolically the value of what he thinks he has given or what he is preparing to give. But is this cynical view not at its core simply a presupposition of atheism or at least the impossibility of theosis? Theosis, according to the Orthodox tradition, is becoming like God, which in biblical language consists of being adopted as a son of the Father through being united to the Eternal Son in the Spirit. It's an inherently Trinitarian reality because God is Trinity. The Trinity is an eternal communion of gift giving, wherein the gifts are not objects, but the divine subjects themselves. The divine simplicity consists of the fact that God possesses no object, nothing distinct from himself, but his pure subject. The gifts of the Trinity are the persons themselves. This is why theosis is not the reception of some mysterious energy that magically sanctifies us, but precisely the energetic indwelling of the personal God in our own person. In being adopted as sons through becoming interior to the body of Christ, we receive the same mode of relation to the Father and the Spirit that the Son has by nature. Namely, God becomes interior to us, and we become interior to God. But what precisely does it mean to become like God? In order to answer this question, we must first establish, insofar as we are capable, who God is. God is the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All three persons share one essence and aren't divided as they're perfectly and essentially mutually interior. In other words, the Father is never without the Son and the Spirit. All three persons share one essence and aren't divided as they're perfectly perfectly and essentially mutually interior. In other words, the Father is never without the Son and the Spirit. Imminent to who the Father is, is the presence of the Son and the Spirit. Thus, as we have said, there isn't a real division between the three persons. One cannot think of the Father as separate from the other two persons without already misunderstanding him, falling into abstractions with no basis in reality. According to Father Dimitri Staniloy, the Father knows himself only in the Son and through the Spirit. The Son is the perfect image of the Father, and the Spirit is he who reveals the Son to the Father and vice versa. The Father only knows himself through forgetting himself in the Son and receiving himself back through the immediate and eternal affirmation of his fatherhood. Likewise, all three divine persons forget themselves in the other two, and it's this self-forgetting that constitutes the unity of the three eyes as pure subjectivity. What's critical to note is that the Father doesn't first know himself and then forget himself in the other two persons in order to receive himself back.
back. His self-forgetting is simply one side of the same communal coin. The father has always already forgotten himself and received himself back. His perfect self-knowledge is actualized as the Trinitarian communion. The son in return has always already emptied himself before the father to receive the fullness of divinity. We can now answer the question, what does it mean to become like God? It means to take up one's cross, to sacrifice oneself for the sake of the other like the Son of God. Theosis is achieved through self-sacrifice, specifically in the form of humility, not simply because God is sovereign and demands worship, but because humility is a divine attribute par excellence. To become like God means to do what he does, and he's eternally humbling himself in the Trinitarian communion. And the Father doesn't simply give a part of himself, but his entire self. It's not, as we have said, that he first has himself in a self-referential or self-contained sense, but that he only receives himself through giving himself. This is the antinomy. This antinomy only remains insurmountable within the fallen logic of rationality or self-relation, but becomes the first principle of an infinite stream of wisdom if understood faithfully. The communal ontology, or Trinitarian metaphysics, reveals that being, life, wisdom, joy, etc., is communion. And just as God's being is inherently communal, so is ours, as we're made in his image. We only know ourselves, and more generally, we only exist at all, in communion with others. As I wrote about in my book, A Faces the Impossibility of Subjectivity, by taking the logic of self-relation consistently, we reach an insurmountable problem wherein the subject can never know itself. This is the first impossibility of subjectivity. On that note, let's now return to Derrida and the impossibility of the gift. As we've already said, Said, Derrida takes the cynical view that the giving and receiving of a true gift is impossible as any self-introspection on the part of the giver or receiver inevitably turns the gift giving into an economic exchange. He concludes that only in the complete absence of memory can a true gift exist. Quote, for there to be a gift, not only must the donor or donee not perceive the gift as such, but have no consciousness of it, no memory, no recognition, he or she must also forget it right away, and moreover, this forgetting must be so radical that it exceeds even the psychoanalytic categorality of forgetting. We are speaking here of an absolute forgetting, a forgetting that also absolves, that unbinds absolutely and infinitely more, therefore, than excuse, forgiveness, or acquittal. Unquote. We believe this is true in some sense. As we've said, the gift giving of the Trinity consists of the three persons forgetting themselves in the others, having always already turned away from themselves and towards the others. But Trinitarian forgetting is as distinct from Derrida's forgetting as heaven is from hell. While the Father's forgetting opens up a boundless horizon of perfect communion, which consists of the knowledge of possessing the gift of the other, Derrida's forgetting precludes any possibility of truly knowing the gift or the giver. This point is crucial, as it's perhaps the most essential disagreement between Derrida and Christian theology on this topic. So why does Derrida come to the conclusion he does? I believe it's because he, like all non-Christian philosophers, reject the dogma of the triunity. For him, the giver is necessarily alienated from the receiver, and in recognizing himself as the giver, he symbolically repays himself for the loss of the gift through the gratification of self-praise. This is the precise opposite of Trinitarian gift-giving in at least two respects. One, the Father doesn't have any moment of self-introspection, as he shares one mind, one will, and one essence with the Son and the Spirit, so he can never step back and see himself as an individual gift-giver separate from those he eternally gives to. And two, the Father doesn't possess the gift in his personhood alone, as a self-contained and complete reality, but the gift only ever exists in its being eternally given and received, so that, for example, the Son's reception of the gift of sonship corresponds exactly Exactly to his affirmation of the Father as he who originally begets. When the divine persons give themselves to each other, there is no stain of prideful self-recognition, but only pure self-sacrifice, pure reception, and pure reciprocation. There is no space or distance between the persons for prideful self-introspection to emerge. This space does indeed exist amongst ourselves during our time on earth, and for most of us, and in most cases, it's filled with the void of pride, at least to a certain extent. Derrida cynicism leads him to conclude that true gift-giving and gift-receiving is impossible. And I believe it's because we exist in a fallen world that Derrida, as a cynical philosopher, concludes that true gift-giving and gift-receiving is
is impossible. While we as Christians would claim that it's only difficult and requires the grace of God to achieve, but in the end, our goal, our telos, is to be united to God and to be united amongst each other and to act as pure gifts for the sake of the other because we know that we are a pure gift from God. Thank you for watching, guys. Please support us on Patreon, on Substack. You can also buy my book, Aphasis. The links to all of that is in the description. Peace of the Lord be with you. God bless. Until next time.